This morning our call to worship is found in Psalm 146. Hear the words of praise, the words of joy on this third Sunday of Advent. <clears throat> praise the Lord. Praise the Lord, O my soul. I will praise the Lord as long as I live. I will sing praises to my God all my life long. Do not put your trust in princes, in mortals, in whom there is no help. When their breath departs, they return to the earth. On that very day, their plans perish. Happy are those whose help is the God of Jacob, whose hope is in the Lord, their God. God who made heaven and earth, the sea, and all that is in them, who keeps faith forever, who executes justice for the oppressed, who gives food to the hungry. The Lord sets the prisoner free. The Lord opens the eyes of the blind. The Lord lifts up those who are bowed down. The Lord loves the righteous and watches over the strangers and upholds the orphans and the widow. The ways of the wicked can bring to ruin, but the Lord will reign forever as your God. O Zion for all generations, praise the Lord. This Sunday of joy, we gather to worship, we gather to praise, we gather to experience this season of Advent, preparation, waiting for the celebration of the birth of the Christ child in Bethlehem. Thank you for your presence today at First Baptist Church of Boone as we gather to worship this hour, in this sacred place, in this holy corner, this place we call home, our hometown, Boone, North Carolina. Some of you are guests. We're extra glad that you're here. We'd love to know you were here. If you have questions about our church or a prayer concern or a need, there's an opportunity to complete a card you can find right in front of you on the back of the pews, and I'd encourage you to do that. Place in the offering plate a little bit later in the service, or find me after worship and hand that to me, and we promise to, to care for that and pray for you uh, and try to answer those questions about this special place. And so let's worship together. Let's greet those that have gathered around us. Welcome them by passing the peace of Christ.
season of placing Christmas lights all over the house and all over the trees and the bushes and trying to outdo your neighbors. a wonderful season. Uh, someone becomes a hero by the one who climbs the ladder and places all the lights everywhere and feels really good about that season and that accomplishment. It's, it's such an exciting time to get to place lights out and be get all of that attention and say, boy, you just did a great job, you know, and then you say, you know, my, my dad taught me everything I know about exterior illumination. So you get excited about those kinds of seasons. But the season of taking the lights down is a different story. And you just kind of put it off, and you put it off, and you put it off, and you're not near the hero that you were when you put the lights up, waiting to finally take those lights down. There are different seasons in our life. And this morning, we want to recognize a couple of graduates here in just a moment and celebrate a new season, a new season, a season of, of graduating from college and, and moving from that experience on to something else. And the, the experience of joy and the worship of joy and the celebration of joy is the reality, I pray, that you know of the presence of Jesus, for that is good news. The presence of Jesus and the presence of joy is even when you don't feel it. Even when you don't feel like it. The last thing you feel is giddy or happy, which is so different than joy. And the good news that was proclaimed on a hillside is that a Savior is born to all people. To all people. And so we enter into the season of joy. And I know for families and and caregivers and loved ones and friends, a graduation is one of those experiences of celebration and accomplishment. And I wanted to read a, a passage uh, that is an important one to me and it's found in Ecclesiastes chapter two, especially for uh, Tierney and Brittany and Kristen, but all of our college graduates. And I wanted you to read that to you. Uh, and it's found uh, in Ecclesiastes and I'm, it's actually chapter 3, verse 1. For everything, there is a season. For everything, there is a season. A time for every matter under heaven. There's a time to be born and a time to die. There's a time to plant and a time to pluck up what is planted. A time to kill and a time to heal. A time to break down and a time to build up. A time to weep and a time to laugh. A time to mourn and a time to dance. A time to throw away stones and a time to gather stones together. A time to embrace and a time to refrain from embracing. A time to seek and a time to lose. A time to keep and a time to throw away. A time to tear and a time to sow. A time to keep quiet and a time to speak. A time to love and a time to hate. A time for war and oh, oh, a time for peace. And so for such a time as this, we celebrate graduates from college and from grad school there are three special young ladies that let us know in the office of, of accomplishments of graduation so they can represent many other graduates. And if, you, if you're not Kristen or Briston or Tierney and you're in the sanctuary this morning and have graduated from college uh, this December uh, or, or a grad school this December, would you wave at me? Has anybody graduated right now? Okay, so these three. And one of the neat things, one's not here. Kristen Carter, uh, early years here in Boone, uh, as pastor when we first moved here, early years of getting to work with the youth, uh, we developed a relationship, Robin and Roy, with Kristen, Kim, and Joe. And the Carters have been special friends and special friends of our church because of relationships with friends in uh, the youth group and then uh, connection with our church and have contributed greatly to you know, a, a youth uh, budget to help folks go on trips and that kind of thing. And they're special folks. And, uh, you may know Joe from, uh, he, he had a retirement this year from the rec recreation facility over at the university. So they're, they're good folks, even though they kind of dabble with the University of Georgia and Ole Miss, but they, that's, that's just something we have to live with. But Kristen, Kristen received her master's degree 
uh, in English this past week, a master's in English from Queen Mary University in London, United Kingdom. So we want to celebrate the Carter family and celebrate Kristen's graduation uh, from London uh, and from Queen Mary University. And it was funny because I said, well, what is your major? And she said, English. I'm like, duh. <laughs> In London at Queen Mary, what, what was my major? So, all right, and so then two special ladies. I'm gonna ask, are you okay? Stand, what, what you want to come up to the platform stand, or you want to stand right there on the floor? What do you think? Let's stand on the floor. All right, Tierney gave me the look. All right, so Tierney and Brittany, y'all come stand right here in front of the beautiful poinsettias and make them even more beautiful as we celebrate the two of you. Um, Brittany has been a very special young lady in the life of our church. Uh, Brittany's been very faithful. This is Brittany right here right in, directly in front of me. And Brittany is a, a Nittany Lion from Pennsylvania. And so I learned her name quickly by going Nittany Brittany. So it helped me get right on it and never forget. And so Brittany's been very faithful. Uh, and uh, you're, you've seen her here all you know her college years. And she's been living with Carolyn Schell this past semester. And so you know what a blessing she's had being a part of this corner by getting to have a relationship with Carolyn. Uh, and her, her degree from Appalachian State University uh, is in recreation management, uh, and we're just so proud of, of her and excited to see how God will use her. This other young lady came to us the last few months, and it's Tierney Boss, and Tierney's been working with our college students and will be our college ministry associate next semester, and so you'll see a lot of her, and so we're excited about that, but she's getting her master's in divinity this week, right? You're heading in the car to Waco, Texas. If anybody needs any Christmas shopping done, you know, at the silos, you see her uh, and let her know that. She might can pick you up something uh, in Waco. Uh, but um, she heads to Waco to get receive her Master's in Divinity at Truett Seminary in Baylor University, Waco, Texas. Go Bears. And so we're proud of these two. And so let's, let's say a, a short prayer for Brittany and Tierney and for Kristen and for all of our, our graduates and those that have come through worship and experiences in this corner and have already headed home. And let's, let's remember these two young ladies in prayer. Would you pray with me? God, indeed, there are many, many seasons. Teach us, oh God, how to hold on. Teach us, oh God, how to let go. Teach us, God, when to do those things. And teach us, God, that when we cry, or when we laugh, when we're on the mountain or in the valley, when we're experiencing being torn up or we're sewing together, when we are just flat out dying, are we experiencing life to the fullest? Help us to know this Sunday of joy of your presence. And so in the celebration of life and living and in the changing of seasons, like college graduation, and graduate school graduation, and divinity school graduation, we praise you, O oh God, for calling young women into ministry, for calling young women into recreation, and English, and teaching, and living, and ministry. And we just ask your blessing, especially in our presence this morning, on Brittany and on Tierney. Bless them and encourage them, and guide them and direct them, and help them hear your voice above the noise, leading them to next steps on their walk and on their journey. We thank you for their accomplishments, where they've been, how they've made us better. And it's in Jesus' precious and holy name we pray. Amen and amen. God bless you too. candle of hope, remembering that hope comes in Christ. And we lit the candle of peace, remembering God's dream of a peaceful world. Today we light the third candle of Advent, the candle of joy. 
In Advent, we are in a time of waiting. Like the Israelites who wandered through the wilderness, waiting to come into the promised land, we wait for the coming of the joy of ages. We wait for the day when, where we can join our voices with the angels to sing joy to the world, the Lord is come. We wait for the day when everlasting joy will be on each of us. On this day, we remember the Spirit who breathes joy into our lives. Testament lesson is found in Isaiah chapter 35. Isaiah 35, verse 1 through 10. Isaiah 35, 1 through 10. The wilderness and the dry land shall be glad. The desert shall rejoice and blossom. Like the crocus, it should blossom abundantly and rejoice with joy and with singing. The glory of Lebanon shall be given to it, the majesty of Carmel and Sharon. They shall see the glory of the Lord, the majesty of our God. Strengthen the weak hands and make firm the feeble knees. Say to those who are of a fearful heart, be strong and do not fear. Here is your God. He will come with a vengeance. He will come and save you. And then the eyes of the blind shall be opened, and the ears of the deaf unstopped. And then the lame shall leap like a deer, and the tongue of the speechless, they will sing for joy. For waters shall break forth in the wilderness, streams in the desert. The burning sand shall become a pool, and the thirsty ground springs of water. The haunt of jackals shall become a swamp, and the grass shall become reeds and rushes. A highway will be there, and it shall be called the holy way. The unclean shall not travel on it, for it shall be for God's people. No traveler, not even fools, shall go astray. No lions shall be there, nor shall any ravenous beast come upon it. They shall not be found there. But the redeemed shall walk there. The ransomed of the Lord shall return and come to Zion with singing. Everlasting joy 
shall be upon their heads. They shall obtain joy and gladness. Sorrow and sigh shall flee away. Ken prays our offertory prayer. I made a promise uh, to Brittany. Uh, Brittany was just standing before you. She's one of our graduates. Uh, 11.30 right now. Uh, she asked me to do it right at 11.30. Uh, her uncle, uh, David Donald, uh, in Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania, uh, been very sick and dying, and they're taking off all connections to him at the hospital right now, 11.30. Uh, just a special uncle, uh, just two doors down from her grandparents. And so... He was the cool aunt, uncle, you know, sleepovers, uh, always welcome in the house. And so she said, at 11.30, can you stop and sing Star Wars? Uh, <laughs> so here we go. Ba, 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 da, 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 da. Brittany, God bless you. Let's pray for David for just one second. God, we thank you for cool uncles. We thank you in our grieving and in our weeping. There is joy in the world. The presence of Jesus. Comfort Brittany and the family. Be with those gathered in that hospital in Pittsburgh. And we lift David Donald to you. In the name of Jesus. Amen. Please remain standing. <coughs> Let us pray. 
Heavenly Father, we thank you for this beautiful and precious day. We praise you for the many blessings that you have bestowed upon us. We thank you for the blessings of this season as we celebrate the birth of your greatest gift to us, your only Son, Jesus. Let us be ever mindful that the giving of our time, talents, and offerings are blessings to us as well as those that receive them. Help us each day to recognize new blessings from you both as individuals and as a church. Let the gifts that we are about to offer be used to further promote your kingdom here on earth. Let us cheerfully and with open hearts give back to you according to what we have. We ask that you accept these gifts so that we at this corner may continue to minister to our church, our community, and our world. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Today's New Testament text comes to us from Luke 1, verses 46 through 55. Mary responded, Oh, how my soul praises the Lord, how my spirit rejoices in God my Savior, 
For he took notice of his lowly servant girl, and from now on all generations will call me blessed. For the mighty one is holy, and he has done great things for me. He shows mercy from generation to generation to all who fear him. His mighty arm has done tremendous things. He has scattered the proud and haughty ones. He has brought down princes from their thrones and exalted the humble. He has filled the hungry with good things and sent the rich away with empty hands. He has helped his servant Israel and remembered to be merciful, for he made this promise to our ancestors, to Abraham and his children forever. This is the word of the Lord. The words of Mary. We pray for each other and we may be afraid. Pray for each other and we may have doubts or questions. We pray for each other and we may be high on that mountain with our hands lifted in celebration. God is present. Joy is in the world. I invite you to lift prayers to God audibly. You can share a name and lift those prayers to God. And I will close our prayer together. Let us pray. O Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayers. Prayers of invoking the presence of the Holy Spirit. Prayers of giving, of offerings, and seeking your blessing. Prayers of celebration of a new season in the lives of people we care about. Prayers of intercession for those that are hurting, those that are sick, those that are dying. God, we pray for others on their behalf and lift them to you, O God. Thank you for hearing our prayers. In this season, we ask your blessing on missionaries all over the world. So we give to offerings that help their work. We seek your blessing and guidance and direction and comfort to their lives. Thank you for hearing our prayers and inviting us into relationship with you. God, you're with us when we're afraid. You're with us when we feel brave. Thank you for giving us strength and courage to face new challenges and fears together. And thank you for giving us each other. Help us to love and protect one another when we feel afraid. Help us, O oh God. We pray in the name of joy, in the name of Jesus.
drummer girl play the organ. <laughs> What's robbing you of joy? What's taking away your joy? Worry? Sickness? Debt? Unforgiving. Unforgiving. I was reminded yesterday afternoon that forgiveness is letting someone off the hook and never mentioning it ever again. What's robbing you? Of joy. The inability to live in the moment. Negativity. You just love bad news. This morning, a challenge, easy words, would be just let go of what's robbing you of joy. Just let it go. But that, that's going to be a lot. It could be sitting down with a counselor, a pastor, a friend, a, a long series of conversations. It could be you know, an immediate experience, it, it could be a lot. But, but, but letting go of, of what's dragging you down is, is important in this answering what's robbing you of joy. Santa Claus carries a really big red sack on his back, a really big sack on his back. When we carry on our back what robs us of joy, and we hold on to it dearly and don't want to let it go, our past or whatever weighs us down because it's easier. We just want to hold on to it. We sure don't want to stop and have our picture taken with it. Let go. What is joy then? What is joy? We've heard a psalmist tell us to rejoice and praise the Lord. A prophet, the way of the Lord, the highway that will be traveled by the people of the Lord, the ransomed of the Lord, a price paid by the Lord that we might know redemption, salvation, a new way, a new road. And Mary, Mary, singing my spirit and my soul, rejoice with this new. Bells ringing, chancel choir singing, and I do indeed have a new respect for our organist's heart for students. I worshiped with her Sunday night at a carol candlelight service and watched a special love for students, and I gained a new respect for her. 21 boxes packed full of food, gift cards, and a ham. Monday afternoon, I saw church members visiting another church member. What was unique about this visit was these church members had just left cancer treatments of their own. And they hobbled up a front porch step to visit a friend on their friend's 99th birthday. Sure was a great picture of church, Tom. An elderly man was giving active, wiggly children dollar bills to place in an offering plate for Santa's toy shop and hospitality house Friday night. It was a beautiful picture of church. The first verse of Silent Night being sung in German at the Lutheran church just across the street. It's a beautiful picture of church. See, joy is not bound by a location. Dennis Parker found Jesus in jail after his fifth driving under the influence arrest. He said he found Jesus when someone over a jail cell phone told him, and it was a young lady, picked up a jail cell phone. He didn't know her. And he told him words that changed his life. And the words were, God still loves you, and you are where you need to be right now. Joy is not bound by a location. Mountain wisdom goes something like this, do not weep at my grave. I am not there. I ride the wind and walk among the clouds. My pain is gone and now replaced with wings. I am with God and no greater joy can be found if not in the presence of God. So do not weep for what I was, rather rejoice at what I have become. 
See, when timing and location appear to be the worst possible, the worst possible, see, there couldn't be a worse time. This could not be a worse time. Or this could not be a worse place. Joy is present. It's found, as I said, even when we don't feel it. Joy is good news even when things are not as they seem. There's a common denominator and thread through the scriptures we've read together and we'll study together. That even when things are not the same, are not what they seem they should be, are not what they seem, joy is good news. For Joseph, Mary's pregnant. This, this, this can't be good. Mary's pregnant. Mary, you're to give birth to a son and call him Jesus. Shepherds on a dark night are all of a sudden interrupted with a bright light. One they had never seen before. And heard the words, do not be afraid. See, things were not what they seemed to be when just on the surface or just at face value. You see, the message of joy was delivered by Angel Prime, not Amazon Prime. The good news delivered by the angels. You see, joy is other-centered. An interesting verse and words I was listening to, Robin is preparing to teach children Sunday school about Mary and Elizabeth. It's an interesting thing that leaps off the page when you hear about John leaped for joy in Elizabeth's womb. A lesson is being taught early, early. How often do you leap? And celebrate the victories of others. Do you do that? Do you do that? Are you other centered? Or is joy all about me? Joy. Leaping for joy with other. What did Mary know? Is a question we're asked a lot. What did Mary know? Mary did you know? What did she know? prior to the news that she was given. i got to believe she knew of prophecy and the promise of the coming of a Messiah. She knew of the laws that could cause her harm. She knew in her place what could happen to her. And so this yes, this yes of Mary to the messenger brought with that lots of possible consequences if everything was as it seemed, everything on face value. She could be shunned. She could be sent away. She could be killed. All a possibility. Even Matthew 1 records for us, Joseph, hearing this news, planned in a caring and loving way to send her away. Deuteronomy 22, and the law says, a man can have his wife stoned or killed for adultery. A man can walk away and, you know, start over. The prophecy of joy. In Isaiah, I believe Mary knew. For her song shows the acceptance of Mary, of the words of an angel. Her song, her profession of faith, her acknowledging God's work in her life. And so I ask you quickly, is joy obtainable for you today? Is joy obtainable for you today? And it may be a question that we shouldn't be asking, for joy is present whether we feel it, experience it, or know it at all. For the message of Christmas is Jesus has come into the world. So have you ever stepped out of a dark place like a movie theater into the sunshine? Were you overwhelmed by the light? In the darkness, your eyes began to adjust so that the bright light wouldn't hurt quite as much as you adjusted to this new sudden bright light. Between our phones and tablets and night lights and city lights, we don't spend much time in darkness. Sometimes we spend so much time looking at lit up screens, our eyes hurt. In Luke 1, there are no screens. There's no electricity. The night was dark and not always safe. The shepherds who watched over their sheep at night learned to see in the dark. They were comfortable with the dark. They were friends with the stars and with the moon, and they knew the sky. They knew the dark. Imagine how overwhelming it must have been 
that after nights and nights and years and years of shepherding on a hillside and knowing the skies like the back of your hand, a light appears that you have never seen before. The shepherds, it says, were terrified. In fact, every bit of our scripture says, don't be afraid. From the psalmist to the prophet to the gospel writer, every story we hear worse, do not be afraid. Do not fear. It's such a different message from our world. Choosing to be bold and act with kindness and grace can be uncomfortable. Even though Jesus is calling us to act that way. It can feel hard and take adjusting. Just like light in the dark. But this is what brings joy. Advent asks us to give the good news a chance to be real in our lives all over again. When you hear the words, do not be afraid, you and I know the end of the story. So we hear, do not be afraid or don't fear. And we just skip straight to, there's a baby in the manger. And we know the end of the story. Let those words marinate. Let those words resonate. Let those words sit on your soul and in your spirit from the scriptures and the divine inspired word. Let those words be in your heart, maybe for the first time. Do not be afraid. For I bring you good news of great joy for all people. Things are not as they seem to be. They're not as they seem to be. Joseph worries Mary's pregnant because she's been unfaithful. You know that's Joseph's worry. The angel tells him, this is a sign of a blessing from God. It's not what it seems, Joseph. Mary fears a visit from an angel cannot mean anything good. <laughs> Awake, disturbed, interrupted. Your first thought is this can't be good. <laughs> This can't, I don't need this visit. This can't be, oh, the preacher just knocked on the door and he's no angel. <laughs> but, oh, this can't be good, this visit. What is the message? But she's reassured that God delights in her. God delights in her. And the shepherds, afraid of a new light in the sky, is met with a shout of joy. So you this morning, you, joy, present in this world, is it assurance you need? Is it blessing you need? Is it good news you need? Is it the word of God saying, I delight in you? What do you need? The good news is Jesus came to earth for ordinary people. First met shepherds on him. Ordinary, you and me, all people. My prayer is that you know Jesus. That you know Jesus. For Christmas is the coming of the child that would save the world. The coming of the child that would provide a bridge for everyone who knew him. To God, the Creator the lover of all people. The gift of Jesus that would die on a cross and rise again on the third day that we might experience and know forgiveness of sin and have new life and new beginnings. Joy. Not something we seek because often we don't find, but the assurance and the blessing and the promise that Jesus is always, always here. Amen. And amen. We're going to sing a hymn of response. A hymn together, an act of worship, and as an act of worship. And I invite you to sing. I'll be near the front if you want to pray with me, or have a question about a relationship with Jesus, or if you come to the place in your walk that today is the day, you say, I, I want First Baptist Church to be my church home. Roy, let's have that conversation. Or... Whatever God leads you to do where you stand and sit or sing.
Let's do that together. Let's dance. Thank you.